Hi, my name is Stephen England from the Art of Sustainability. In 2019, I had the great privilege of interviewing Herbert Giraudet from the Club of Rome, a key contributor, a major contributor to the 2018 report from the Club of Rome, Come On. And the theme of the interview was called The Shadow of Enlightenment, Enlightenment being a key theme within the, within the report. And my second question to Herbie was, is this about a technological refix or a holistic rethink? So following on from our, what we were talking about in terms of the Enlightenment, in terms of <clears throat> the Enlightenment that was and the new Enlightenment and the need for reconnection yeah. and, and a different type of thinking, the cyclical yeah. thinking, holistic type of thinking. Um, I think I want to move on to, um, to focus in a little bit on to the idea of technology. Good, and yeah, sure. In terms of the idea of nature as energy which we harness and, and make use of. I think the key question for me here at the moment, and uh, somebody working in the area of sustainability, I, I hear a lot about, it seems to just be about, if we can just move from a carbon-based economy mm. to a renewable-based economy, yeah. then, then, then that we, we can carry on as we are, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, without any kind of fundamental, profound change in terms of, of, of our relationship with the natural world, which is, mm. which is what we were discussing, uh, just discussing. So if we, if we can sort of break that down into, into the two sections. First of all, just to pose the question to you, is it about simply um, moving from a carbon-based economy to a renewables-based economy. Well, first of all, and what, you, is that, and what, and what yeah. does that mean and, and entail? Yeah. Well, first of all, when you mention the term carbon-based economies, I mean that on the one hand relates to our energy use, but on the other hand, we are, we are carbon ourselves. All the food that we produce is carbon too. So I mean, we're never going to get away from being, to quite an extent, carbon-based in the way we. We, we live. But the critical issue in this context, of course, is that we have been so reliant on fossil fuel energy, uh, you know, in, in, in ever since the Industrial Revolution and this extraordinary way started, of course, in the UK and then went to, to Europe, Germany, then America and so on. So everywhere people found coal and oil and gas, of course, they started digging deep into the ground and the technologies became ever more sophisticated. Deep, she, deep sea oil now comes from five kilometers down underneath the, the uh, ocean floor. And so it's unbelievable what has happened with carbon-based energy technologies, all to kind of power our motor cars, our airplanes, our hot water systems in our houses and so on and so forth. So we are taking it for granted and just <coughs> a switch of a, a flick of a switch, of course, gives us access to this energy. So it's become incredibly convenient to live this way. And we started it in Europe. Now the rest wants to, the rest of the world wants to copy us. And of course, has done so to, to a great extent. So all of this became a concern in the 1970s. And so the beginnings of the renewable energy revolution really started about that time. So suddenly people said, OK, is it possible to power the world with uh, renewable solar and particularly solar and wind energy instead. And so these were questions that were starting to be asked at that time, but now we are beginning to have answers to these questions. So the reality is that the trans technology has been transformed beyond recognition. For instance, wind power technology in the 1970s was 50 kilowatt turbines. Now we have up to 12 megawatt turbines already in action in places like the North Sea. S similarly, solar energy was tiny little panels initially developed for space flight. Now suddenly you can find them on houses all over the world. So that's all because of technological breakthroughs, but also because of the breakthrough in terms of costs. As the production goes up massively, the costs go down, so that happened with all renewable energy technologies. So suddenly we are now talking about cost parity between fossil fuel energy and renewable energy. So that's a fantastic breakthrough and very important and very exciting. So without that, we couldn't even begin to talk about a sustainable future. So now we have this, the question is, OK, how fast can we go for 100 percent renewable? And certainly that's beginning to happen in quite a few places. I worked in Adelaide, South Australia, introduced feed-in tariffs there. They are now at 50 percent plus renewable electricity from solar and wind. Uh, in Denmark, similar figures. In Germany, also coming up to that kind of figure. But that's still mainly electricity rather than also transportation and, 
and other uh, uses of, the, uh, of energy. So we are rapidly to moving towards electric vehicles, towards houses not p powered any longer by, by oil and gas and coal, but by, by electricity instead. All very, very good news, though the downside is, of course, the materials used in these technologies also have an environmental impact to some extent. Then it's a question not only the use of energy technology in terms of input, but also efficiency. So obviously we have to make new kind of houses, we have to retrofit existing buildings, making them much more energy efficient. All that is, these are steps in the right direction. But then if you argue, okay, that's enough, then of course you are in trouble because it is only part of the aspect of our impacts on nature today. We would still be having to build more tarmac roads if we, if we continue to, to have more electric vehicles. We would still use metals in all kinds of ways for the rest of our economy. So we need to go much more deeply into understanding nature and saying, OK, if we are serious about a circular regenerative type of economy, obviously regenerative renewable energy is a key part of that, but it's certainly only a component of that. So the thinking about how to live in ways that nature can cope with in terms of human activity. It is all about rethinking our economic systems, systems as well and our general attitudes to, to consumerism. We as consumers today are very one-dimensional, one concerned only with buying and, 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 and consuming stuff that we can buy and that we are told to buy from advertising. But instead, the point has come to understand much more deeply how our overall life affects, uh, affects the environment. And it's not just climate change and the emissions of fossil fuels that are such a disastrous development now. It's also finding ways of reabsorbing the emissions that we produce whilst we continue to burn energy from fossil fuels. So when you see the burning rainforests in the Amazon or the burning forests in Siberia, you're seeing a reduction in the capacity of nature to absorb carbon emissions. So these are disastrous developments. So in conjunction with moving towards renewable energy, we simultaneously need to move towards f protecting and reforesting nature in new ways, in absorbing carbon in the soils, organic farming, regenerative farming. All of these are aspects of the comprehensive change in the way of life that is not es essential. Because on our current trajectory, we are destroying the future of, of, of our children and their children. The upshot of all of this is it, it's not about a technological fix. No. It, it's, it's not a simply case of we're going to um, move away from, as you say, we're, we, are, we, we are always having an impact because just by dint of being alive, we are impacting. Um, but in terms of our te technology, it isn't just about simply moving to renewables. It's about rethinking the whole way that our economy not just um, here in the UK, but across the world in terms of the whole, um, a whole global economy um, behaves. Um, but I'd like to just move on a little bit more to the holistic, to the holistic rethink. Yeah. And you've, you've touched upon that in terms of your conversation, in terms of uh, how economies work. But at the end of the day, the economy is our people. Sure. Um, and and, um, yeah, and, and, and it's, if it's going to change, it's going to start with, with, with the person, with the self. That um, that, you, that will um, inform his this uh, this new way of thinking within the economy. Well, it's not an easy one because we are constantly bombarded with messages to buy, buy, buy. Advertising is all about this, of course, and that's the key part of how economic growth is driven by f encouraging and even forcing people to buy, to become consumers to not just be a, a human being in the broadest sense, but basically to be one dimensional man as consumer, not as parent, not as, not as voter, but, but basically just being a consumer. So we are being driven in that direction constantly. And as a result, we are also therefore increasing our impact on, on the environment all the time. So obviously to rethink that is a fundamental and profound issue. And of course the environmental movement has been all about this. The Green Movement has basically, as a new political movement, argued that we need to change the way we are in terms of the overall being of us as, as on a day-to-day basis, -day, but I mean also in the deeper sense of, of you know, what makes us tick, if you like, every day. So certainly the consciousness of 
consuming in a sustainable way is of, re, of, of absolutely critical importance. So we're seeing a growth in organic farming and organic uh, consuming. People are moving towards vegetarianism. Veganism is on the rise. It's a remarkable development. Young people are saying, I don't want to own a car any longer. So mm -hmm. that's an interesting development. People are saying, I don't want to get into airplanes any longer. Mm -hmm. So all of that is beginning to happen. So people are saying, do I really need two televisions or three televisions? People are beginning to become aware that whatever we do today leaves an impact on, 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 on the pe people that come after us. Mm -hmm. The concern about, you know, people have always said, I want my children to have a better life than I've had. Well, today, we are, if we are not careful, we're moving in the opposite direction because of all these environmental legacies that we're leaving to future generations. As climate change you know, becomes ever more acute, obviously, that has huge, huge impact on individual lives in terms of 40% you know, of the world's people live somewhere close to the sea. Sea level rises becoming an issue, temperatures, record temperatures becoming an issue, extreme weather conditions, all of these are beginning to, these issues are beginning to become part of the thinking in, on an everyday basis. So a lot of people who until recently have sort of poo-pooed the environmental movement saying, okay, they just want us to consume less, they want us to have less fun. People are suddenly beginning to say, hang on, we are, need to think much more deeply. And so that is certainly an encouraging development. The only question is, are we rather late in, in moving in this direction? I mean, the environmental movement has been going on for 40 years or so, and there have been warning signs, you know, in terms of uh, where we should be going for a long time. The Club of Rome, uh, 52, uh, 50 years ago, published a report called Limits to Growth, saying we cannot have unlimited economic population, urban growth on a finite planet. Well, that was a pub widely publicized report, 30 million copies published worldwide. But everywhere you look, economies are saying, no, that's not for us. And then individual people said, OK, you know, we, are want, we want to carry on with the way we are today. We don't want to continue, uh, want to reduce our standard of living. So people are beginning to talk about quality of life increasingly, rather than just standard of living. So closeness of communities, closeness of families, uh, instead of consuming products, having love, you know, that's a big, big difference. A friend of mine once said, you know, a lot of people, when they want to feel love, they buy a hamburger, they eat a hamburger mm. instead of getting a hug. Mm. So these kind of issues of how we can be happy, the question of happiness is becoming a big issue in the mm. discussion on mm. economics. So all of that is beginning to inform not just us as individuals in terms of our thinking, but also beginning to influence economics thinking. And, and so there, there, there is a global rethink certainly underway. The question is how quickly it's going to happen and how fast it's going to go in terms of becoming mainstream. And that is certainly an unanswered question at this moment in time.